All right, yet again. So today, or at least this video today, we're gonna to talk about tangent planes and linear approximations. So in three-dimensional space, right, any lines may be tangent to a given point on a curve. In fact, you might even say infinitely many lines. And if these lines lie in the same plane, then they determine the tangent plane at that point. So a technical definition is, let P sub zero um, be a point on a surface S and let C be any curve passing through that point and lying entirely in my surface S. If the tangent lines to all possible curves like that, so all such curves C at P sub zero lie in the same plane, then this plane is called the tangent plane to S at P sub zero. Figure 4.27 of the textbook, which we can see is reproduced here, visually illustrates that. So for a tangent plane to a surface to exist at a point on that surface, it's sufficient for the function defining the surface to be differentiable at that point. And so how do we find the equation of the tangent plane, you might ask, and I, of course, will answer. Alrighty, so here we go. <clears throat> Suppose S is a surface defined by a differentiable function Z um, equal F of X, Y. Let's let P sub zero be the point X sub zero, Y sub zero, and suppose that point is in the domain of F. Let's find two tangent lines to S, and then the planes are gonna be the planes, and then the plane will be defined using the cross product of the direction vectors of these lines. So kind of all the way back to when we were finding equations of lines. Anyway, the intersection of S with the vertical traces given by X equals X sub zero. So just letting Y vary and Y equals Y sub zero. So letting X vary actually give us two such lines. And so the first line will be Z equals F of X sub zero, Y sub zero uh, times Y minus Y sub zero and Z equals F of X sub zero plus at a DF DX X sub zero, y sub zero times x minus x sub zero. I'm not sure exactly what I said there. So let me try that again. Z equals f of x sub zero, y sub zero plus df dy at that point times y minus y sub zero. And z equals f of x sub zero, y sub zero plus the derivative with respect to x at that point times x minus x naught. So what are the direction vectors for each one of these going to be? Well, we'll give them names just to make things easier when we are plugging stuff in. So let's say one of them, we'll call it A. And so that's gonna be J plus DF dy in the uh, Z direction and B is gonna be I plus DF dx again in the z direction. All right, so then we have to find um, a cross b, right? Uh, let's see, what do I have for So the cross product of a with b is going to be Harkening back to our definition of the cross product, it's the determinant of the matrix whose first row is the unit vectors. The second row is going to be the components of our direction vectors. So uh, df dy at the original point and one zero df dx. And if you take that determinant, you'll end up with the partial with respect to X times I plus the partial with respect to Y times J minus K. All right, so this vector is perpendicular or orthogonal to both lines that means what? 
That means it is perpendicular to the tangent plane. Excellent. So it's perpendicular to the tangent plane. So let's use um, A cross B, the cross product of A with B as the normal vector for the tangent plane that we need in getting the equation and the point um, P sub zero, but now we'll consider the point um, on the surface, X sub zero, Y sub zero, F of X sub zero, Y sub zero. And we'll use those um, in the equation for a plane. And if we do that, we will get the equation of the plane Z is equal to F of X zero Y zero plus ZF DX at X sub zero Y sub zero times X minus X naught plus ZF DY at X zero Y zero times Y minus Y naught. And that is the equation of our tangent plane. So, of course, we'd like to do an example. So let's find the equation of the tangent plane to z equals natural log of 2x plus y at the point negative 1, 3. Okay, so um, z is equal to f of x, y, which is log of 2x plus y. And so that tells me that my partial with respect to x is 2 over 2x plus y. My partial with respect to y is 1 over 2x plus y. So at my point, the partial with respect to x is going to be 2 over 2 times negative 1 plus 3, or just 2. And my partial with respect to y at that point is just going to be 1 over 2 times negative 1 plus 3, which is just 1. Finally, we need to evaluate the function at that point. So evaluate f at the point negative 1, 3. And that's natural log of the quantity 2 times negative 1 plus 3. Natural log of 1, also known as 0. So the equation of the tangent plane is going to be just plugging into the formula. We get z is equal to f, which is 0 plus the partial with respect to x, x minus x sub zero, which here is negative one, uh, plus one times y minus y sub zero, which is y minus three. Simplifying, that gives me two x plus two plus y minus three, or two x plus y minus one. So just like in calc one, we can talk about linear approximations. So in Calc 1, right, we use the tangent line to give a linear approximation of a function near a point, and we can do something similar here using the tangent plane. Okay, so uh, what do I mean? So if I have a function z equals f of x, y with continuous partial derivatives that exist at this point, x sub 0, y sub 0, the linear approximation of f at x sub zero, y sub zero, or at least near it, is given by the equation L of x, y is f of x sub zero, y sub zero, plus uh, df dx. Basically, we just evaluate um, the tangent plane at the point x, y. And that's all she wrote. And so the idea here is that if f is a sufficiently nice function, whatever nice means, um, then if there's a point x sub zero, y sub zero, where we know or can easily determine the function value and the first partial derivatives, then for points near that x sub zero, y sub zero, the linear approximation, i.e. the point on the tangent plane, is going to give a value that's close to the exact value of f of x, y. 
So let's just look at an example to see how this would work. Let's find the linear approximation to um, the per function z equals 3 plus um, x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 at the point negative 4, 3. Okay, so again, z is equal to f of x, y, so our f of x, y is 3 plus x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9. So df dx is just going to be 2x over 16, which is x over 8. And df dy is going to be 2y over 9, which is just 2y over 9. So evaluating at our point negative 4, 3, we're going to get that df dx, the partial with respect to x, is going to be negative 4 over 8, also known as negative 1 half. And the partial of f with respect to y at the point negative 4, 3 is going to be 2 times 3 over 9, which is going to be 2 thirds. Okay, finally, um, and uh, what is our function value at negative 4, 3? Well, that's 3 plus the quantity negative 4 squared over 16 plus 3 squared over 9, which I'm going to say is 5. So my linear approximation is just given by the equation of the tangent plane. So plugging into that formula, we get five uh, plus a negative one half or minus one half x minus a negative four plus two thirds times y minus three. Which to simplify, you would think, right? So we can either simplify it or leave it as is. Sometimes it's more convenient to leave it as is, but I am going to just simplify a touch and write that as x plus four. And so now um, that's it. So we could use this to approximate let's say f of negative 3.9 comma 3.01. So if I plug that into my formula, I get five minus one half times negative 3.9 plus four plus two thirds times 3.01 minus three, which gives me five minus one half times uh, 0 0.01 uh, plus 2 thirds times 0 0.01, which I calculated incorrectly when I typed up my notes. So give me two seconds on the calculator. I get 5 minus 2 times 0 0.01 plus 2 thirds times 0 0.01 calculator tells me is about uh, 4.97. Okay, anywho, of course, if you have a calculator, this was a silly little exercise, was it not? All right, so I'm going to split this into two videos. In the next video, we're going to talk about differentiability and differentials, which is going to use this um, that we've just done. Okay, so let's split this so you have a little break.